Hello, everyone, and welcome. You are in another episode of the Health, Wisdom, and Wealth Show, where we're having powerful conversations for living your best life. And today, my wonderful guest is Felicia Searcy. So let me tell you a little bit about Felicia. I have just been so enthralled with her. She's got an amazing energy from the first time I met her. And um, she and I are going to explore how to dream your way to health and wealth. Felicia is a premier results expert and a life mastery consultant. And she helps thriving or helps women create thriving entrepreneurships to define and move towards their dream. Alicia says her purpose is supporting your passion to empower you to discover and express your best self as you create the life you love. And we all wanna do that. Um, she's an award-winning transformational coach and international speaker, author, and minister. And I didn't know that about her. She supported thousands to create a path for living a life clarity and confidence where a few times a day you find yourself saying, I love my life and I love doing that. Join us and let us get into this conversation because Felicia is going to share her passion for helping you dream and create a path, a plan and a path to help, to help and well, her shared cause stems from a deep passion to live a values-based life, to do good, be good, and make good every day, which we love, I love so very much. So welcome, Felicia. It's so great to have you Thank here. You. It is wonderful to be here, Relin. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. And I did not, I couldn't state it more how much I love just being in your energy. You have got some of the best energy. And thinking about oh, doing you. this interview, all I could think was, yes, I will be in that energy of positiveness <laughs> and dreaming. And, you know, a lot of times people think dreaming is a sedentary state or mm -hmm. a state that doesn't really require anything but mind work. But we, we know it, it, it requires a little bit more. We'll get into that. But to get us started, tell us a little bit more about you and your journey towards this focus on living the life you dream, a life of success and wealth and great health and best relationships. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah. So uh, um, thank you. Um, yeah. You know, myself, along with so many others, um, my background, uh, the home I grew up in, doing the best that they could, it was dark. I mean, it was just, you know, there was a lot of addiction, mental illness. Um, so it, it, it robbed me of hope. It robbed me um, of a sense of worth and value. And um, uh, it, it was, I, uh, I, I questioned you know, whether or not I even belonged here. Um, and so just really um, a very uh, dark time. Um, you know, and again, growing up that way, it just, uh, it, it eroded at my sense of self. And I'll never forget, I was um, actually teaching high school. It was right after I graduated from college. Um, and I was staring down, I was doing hall duty. And, and it was a big high school. It was like, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest high schools in the state. It's actually where I graduated, which, you know, I found ironic. And there was the main hall and I'm staring down this main hall and all of these high school students are just going up and down the hall. And I could just see it as a metaphor for my life. And I just, it's like, there was this part of me that said, oh my God, is this going to be it forever? This sense of desperation and just trying to get through the day and, you know, do I even have a right to be here? And, you know, certainly there was no room for dreaming, right? And my perception of a God at that time was one of punishing and um, certainly wasn't one to turn to 
when I was feeling um, just so dark. It wasn't even low, it was dark. And I'm so grateful for that moment because it's one of those things that um, you reach that pivotal point. Here's the thing that I wanna support everybody with. You reach that pivotal point, it's a choice point. It's the point, do you open up to something different or truly do you close the door and this is it? Now, I think life keeps bringing opportunities to open the door, right? It's not a one-time thing, but I'm grateful that that door opened for me at the age of 22. Um, and I was just, I was in such a right place for something different. And that's when the teachers began to drop in. They were there all along. I just wasn't receptive to them. And, and I began to hear that there was a different way. I began to hear that I was here by divine, uh, uh, divine appointment that, um, and that I had this amazing gift to create and that I was created to use this gift. You know, one of the things that I often hear people talk about is that mindset. It's all about mindset. And I just really want everybody to get, it's not about mindset. Mindset's a really important piece of it, but mindset's like going into the Empire State Building, getting off on the 50th floor and saying, wow, this is great. Not realizing you have 58 floors above you that you can get an even better view. But one of the things that happened for me was that I became aware that there truly is a power that created me, moving through me, that expresses through and as me, and that we have been given this gift of being a, to um, be able to create unlimitedless, and that I then dedicated my life to learning how to unlock this gift in order to put it in service to what life would want me to be engaged in, realizing, and here's the thing I want everybody to hear, that when you uh, choose for a life that you love, it's your highest form of love back to our world. It is our highest contribution. And so, yes, I absolutely transformed everything that happened, you know, in my childhood, I was able to harness it and really, um, allow it to, uh, show me how to serve even greater. And it's, it's it, it creating this just breathtaking life that I have to pinch myself. Um, it's like, wow, I get to live this and just dedicated to helping everybody understand that, you know, helping everybody understand this breathtaking power that we've all been given. And what is it to understand the power and what is it to dedicate our lives to unlocking this power and put it in service to what brings us most alive? Wow. <laughs> Wow, that is amazing. I love it. The breathtaking power that we have to live the kind of life that puts our gifts in service to others and in turn allows us to live that kind of life. Yeah. Wow. So Felicia, what does a woman need to do to prepare herself for the journey of taking this dream of living the life that you really want to making it reality? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think the first thing, especially women, right? Because one of the things that with the, with the, the thousands, literally thousands of people that I've had the honor of working with over the years, especially women, women downplay that desire. They downplay that dream. They look at it and all they can see are all the people that are going to be impacted negatively. Who's going to get left behind? Who's not going to get taken care of? You know, there's the voice that says, who do I think I am? You know, um, uh, let me just stay in the background. This is too grandiose. This is my ego. All of those voices get triggered when uh, people really start allowing themselves to dream. So when we talk about where's the first place to start, first place to start is to realize that's not your dream. That's not your dream. We are these living, evolving, uh, growing beings. You know, when I talk about unlimited capacity to create, it's let's look at what is that capacity. That unlimited capacity 
is our thinking capacity. It's our ability to generate images in this faculty of our imagination. We actually have the ability to consciously choose the images that we show in our imagination. That's gift number one. Gift number one is the fact that we have an imagination. Gift number two is we have the ability to actually choose what we show in our imagination. And gift number three is realizing that that then influences and impacts this world around us, that what we are predominantly mentally rehearsing in this breathtaking capacity of our imagination actually becomes the organizing principle for who we see ourselves, how we see ourselves, how we show up, and literally becomes the organizing principle for this field of energy around us. Now, that's kind of a preliminary understanding, but it's so important to get that because when you start giving yourself permission to even have a dream and people kind of, you know, they, they like, oh my God, I would love this. And then they shut it down. It's like they dream holding their breath. And when we understand these three gifts, number one, your imagination, number two, you have the capacity to choose images and number three, it influences this energy field around us. Then it stands to reason that this life force energy that breathed you into existence, that created you and gave you these gifts, wants you to grow those gifts. And the only way that life has to, well, there's two ways. One is when hard, tragic, difficult stuff happens, right? We've all been through that. That's no fun, right? It's just, <laughs> and, and so the second way, right? So we all know how to grow through the tough times. Everybody has, you know, we've learned that. And I would imagine your audience, um, v -Lynn, people have mastered growing through the tough times. What life wants us to do is to grow through our dream, to understand that our dream is the vehicle by which life helps us wake up to more of who we are in these amazing capacities. So, so that's like the preliminary, where do you start? There has to be a foundation. There has to be a grounding and understanding how this all works. And so the first, now, where do you start? Understanding that life is dreaming its dream through you. This is not selfish. Mm. You're not denying something from somebody else. You're not being egotistical. You're not being arrogant. You're not going to take away from somebody else, but it's actually calling, um, answering the call of this divine presence moving through you. It's recognizing that you are opening up to how life wants to express in a bigger, bolder way through you. And that we, it's true humility to hear and answer the call. In fact, people, women especially are, are often concerned about their being selfish if they go for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. It's actually an act of selfishness not to go for it. Mm -hmm. Because it's the way that life wants to serve and expand even more expansively through you. So that's the first place to start. Understand that you are the vessel. You are the receptacle. I mean, women are, re are built to receive, right? Mm -hmm. You are the receptacle of this dream. This dream needs to live and express through you. That's the first place to start. Because when you get that, now you're willing to listen. Now you're willing to hear. Wow. I just, that is such a vivid analogy bringing it all to life. It makes so much sense how we um, hold back, not even realizing what we're denying, not just for ourselves, but for so many others that we have no, no way to even fathom who might be impacted if we were to open up and bring in all that's available to us. And you know, a lot of people just don't believe that that is available to them. They don't believe that dreaming is available to them. They don't believe that a better way, uh, more money, better health is available to them. They've been in such a place for so long. It's just been the, 
you know, continual, and I don't even want to say hamster wheel as much as the treadmill with yeah. no exit. And so what do you tell the woman who sees her life on that treadmill and she's just not in a place to openly believe it because she's been let down so many times? Well, and that's the thing, right? Is that it, it gets to a place where people just go to any lengths to avoid disappointment. Mm. One of the things that I would I would suggest is, you know, and and dreaming is a remarkably vulnerable thing. Hoping is a vulnerable thing, right? And so, so I would imagine if they're listening, if you're listening, you, you there's there's some hope in you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be tuning in. Right. And my sense is, Vilan, that the woman who has no hope is probably not listening to this broadcast mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's got to be enough hope to be able to tune in. Now, I would imagine that there may be moments when it feels, why bother? Right. What can I do to orchestrate my world in order to protect myself from disappointment? Let me just put my head down and do this, you know. Um, and, and uh, resign myself to what is, um, you know, the, the safety in this, but you're here. And so my hunch is, is that that may be a part of you, but it's not all of you. Otherwise you wouldn't be on this, uh, on this broadcast. You wouldn't be watching this. So the first place to start is to cause yourself to pay attention to those times during your day, not just in your life, but when things are working, when things do feel good, let me back up even more. You know, when we think about, um, am I destined for this, right? That um, uh, there can be a lot of conversation around, well, this is just the way it is. Um, you know, why would I think that I'm meant for anything more or meant for anything different? I like to liken it to this. We are this amazing work of art. Mm. Every single one of us, when you think about the, the, the intricacy that was required to create us, you know, think about it. We can't even take one breath on our own. I can't consciously cause myself to breathe. I don't have to consciously cause myself to breathe. My body was designed in such a way that it breathes on its own, right? I mean, I don't have to stay awake to make myself breathe. As I shared earlier, we've been given this breathtaking capacity to create that no matter where you are in your life, you can look at the evidence and you can see that there are things that you've created somewhere along the line you've created. But again, B. Lynn, my sense is that your, your audience is probably not at that desperation point, that they're probably further down the continuum where they know some of this stuff. So, so it's, a, it's a confirmation and a, and a reaffirmation. So we've been given this amazing power. We are this breathtaking work of art that we as a human species have not been able to replicate. Now I get it that we've got, we were able to do some cloning, but we still have to use the, um, the resources that are already here, right? That we've not been able, there's a great joke out there where, you know, the scientists go to God and say, hey God, we got this covered. We, you know, we know how to do this human creation thing. You know, thank you, but we don't need you anymore. And God says, oh, really? Show me. And the scientists go to pick up the dirt. And God goes, uh-uh-uh, get your own dirt. So it's, and I, I, I'm a, you know, I love the marriage of spirituality and science and realizing that there's still a generating force. Now, where I'm going with this is to really understand how we were created from the essence of that source itself, which is love, that we are love mm -hmm created. We are love made manifest. Now imagine taking the Mona Lisa, this beautiful piece of art, and I don't know where it is right now, but it's wherever it is, it's very protected, right? It's got mm -hmm. the right kind of light. It's in an air sealed encasement. It's a remarkably protected um, work of art. Imagine taking the Mona Lisa out and just putting it out in the elements. You know, I live in Arizona, putting it out in the Arizona sun. We'd never do that. Right. But we do it with ourselves. Right. 
we do it with ourselves, right? And so to, you know, to move yourself further down the continuum, back to your original question, to move yourself down the further down the continuum to where you are, are generating more hope, where you give yourself more permission to dream and take those action steps, keep coming back to the reality of who you really are and how you were created and that you truly are a work of art. And as this work of art, there's a, um, um, it's a, 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 a life force energy wants to express through this art. So, which is you. So stack the evidence, stack the evidence of how things, the universe is working in your behalf right now, how you have created things in the past. Start stacking the evidence of how the universe really does have your back and don't do it alone. You know, again, you're tuning into here. There's just, there's so much great stuff out there to support you um, where you don't have to like muscle it out on your own. Uh, uh, find a community, connect in with the community and, and let the, the momentum and the growth and the good that's happening for other people, let it be an inspiration for you and, and, uh, uh, plug into that. It's a great place to plug into. We all know the power of the, the mini and yeah. many might just be two or three. Um, yeah. but they, they, you definitely want to make sure that they are in that space of hoping that creates inspired action. And That's let's, it. let's talk about that action because we're talking about creating health and wealth and dreaming. And I think I started out saying, you know, a lot of people think dreaming is I'm just going to dream it, you know, kind of the secret misunderstood. I'm just going to dream it and it'll happen. But what, what is the real science of dreaming that, that requires action? Yeah, it's a great question. So the so the first action is to literally design that uh, that dream, right? That we have to, right now. Here's the thing about our imagination: we cannot turn our imagination off. It's always working. You are always running movies in your imagination. The movies you run in your imagination then determine how you feel. And they determine how you feel about yourself. They determine the way you see yourself. That feeling is the, is the conversation that you're having with this invisible field. You know, the, the quantum physics calls the, the quantum field. And the way you see yourself, the way you identify yourself will determine the ideas that you're willing to entertain or miss, the opportunities that you can see or ignore, the, and then the actions you take and the way in which you take those actions, we will never outperform the way we see ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the first place to start is to really start asking, what would I love? What would I love to create? What's the life that I would love to have lived through me? That's just the first step though. Now there's a whole, like you said, there's a whole art and science to creating a vision. And that's, you know, the work that I do when I have the opportunity to dig in much deeper with people, because it's not just a matter of kind of rainbow bones and unicorns and oh, what if, but it's a, it's a, um, it's a very specific sense of ownership and really seeing it. And so the reason you want to really see it in your mind's eye, and I have people physically write it out and work with it on a, on a daily basis is because now what you're doing as you're seeing the vision and you're working with it, you're reading it on a daily basis, v -Lynn, what you're doing is that you are literally training your body to recognize this as your normal. You are building cells of familiarity, cells of recognition of this life. And then most important, you're building those cells of recognition of you in this life, that it's not some foreign country 
but that it actually becomes your normal. It becomes your routine. So often people mistake a dream as an event. Let me achieve this goal. Let me get the car. Let me get the relationship. Let me get the house. Let me get the job. You know, they'll, they'll do what's called what I call episodic manifestation to get the thing, but they didn't bring themselves along. And so even mm -hmm. if you get the thing, you don't get to be a part of it because you are not a fit for that thing. And so you just go on with the same uh, um, tenor of what your life has been up until this point. And I think this is the piece that people miss. You know, they get the car, they get the money, they get the whatever, and then it's like, okay, but now what? But what they missed was the opportunity for transformation along the way. And so the first step is to have the vision. And then the second step is to ask, who is my vision asking me to become? What is my vision asking me to discover about myself? What is my vision asking me to learn how to accommodate more of? And that's, that's where the wor real work is. The real work then is to, and much more than what I can obviously get into here, mm -hmm. but the real work is to own the identification to become that person, not just momentarily here or there, but where you actually embody that new state of being. And that's a moment by moment. Who am I being the, as the woman who is living this dream? Now from that state of awareness, and this is why this is so important, when you start identifying differently, you're literally leaving your old self behind. This is why so few people do this. When you start identifying differently, you are literally lighting up different areas of your brain. You are moving from that survival mode of the back end of your brain, and you're bringing all your focus into your creative centers. Now you have access to ideas and opportunities in this stream of intelligence that's always guiding us, always inspiring us, because now you can hear those unfamiliar ideas and not recoil from them. Now you're re re receptive to those opportunities that to the, the woman who built your current results can't even fathom. But the more, not only are you able to see it, but the more you're able to be it moment by moment, now you have access to those areas of the brain and to this field of energy that's always inspiring you. And you have access to the boldness required to take those persistent action steps that are molding you. They're those persistent action steps taken from this framework, this state of awareness mold you. And as you're molded, now you get to come into the room of your dream. You belong in your dream. And that's the work is to become the woman who belongs in her dream. I'm not saying this is a matter of worthiness. This has nothing to do, you're worthy. You're 100% worthy. It's a matter of being an, identif an, an identity match for it, that you have to identify with it in order to be at home in the routine of your dream. Your dream is an embodiment and it's a routine. It's not an event. And so there's the process of coming home in the body of the woman who belongs in their dream. My goodness, I love that. I I love that. I'm gonna have to pull that out and and make a post about it because you really identified something that I think that most women um, and probably most people just don't even connect the dots on. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we've heard so many people talk about, you know, the whole vision board and dream your life and, you know, walk your dream out. But you've put it in a different perspective as far as make it something that you are in. I know mm -hmm. in hypnosis, we do this exercise of visioning that starts with the vision out there detached from us and then we bring it in so that we can attach to it and mm -hmm. um i really didn't i mean i love the process the process works and you know just understanding that it works has been sufficient 
but to know that there is another way of looking at it. And I always say there's so many perspectives to yeah, so many great things. And um, that's just an amazing perspective that we just, a lot of it is because we're not exposed to it, you know, and we look at, you know, this is, this is who I am. This is how I was brought up. This is, you know, it's kind of like how we treat food and the way that we cook. You know, my grandmother cooked this and I'm going to cook it the same way. It's killing me. It didn't kill my grandmother, <laughs> but, you know, even <laughs> back then, butter was made differently than what butter is made today. And yeah. so we don't yeah. even make those connections. So I love how you brought that in. And I mean, let's talk about stuff like that. Like, you know, our past lives, you know, yeah. uh, families of origin. Um, a lot of us really have been conditioned to believe that they, we're stuck with them. Yeah. And that, you know, whatever the family said, about you and your potential and you know what you should and should not do um really has been damaging to us and we find women who are saying but I can't leave what my grandmother taught me I can't you know and and is there a way that you kind of talk about this in terms of you know it's not about leaving what they taught you it's about modifying it to what is your reality of today what is when it's what, not, yeah and it's not even so much what the reality is today but it's it's a recognition that it's you know life is a growth process right and um um you know when i so when i look at my grandparents right that they um both of them poor they were sharecroppers they you know grew up picking cotton um, and, and just, you know, it was a big deal to move to, when they moved to Memphis, um, and my grandfather got a job at the Firestone plant, like that was a big deal, right? Um, they certainly didn't want me as their granddaughter to stop there, right? So I think, first of all, recognize that these family patterns are literally a physiological sensation in our bodies. Again, there's an identification that happens and gets wired in genetically, gets wired in in our environment. And so those feelings of, and those beliefs of not enough, not worthy, who do I think I am, that there is actually a physiological familiarity and there's a vibration to it, right? That there's a, that our our systems are literally vibrating at that at that at that state, and that you know go back to what I shared earlier. There's an identification with that, and so as we're living in that and we're living that, we see ourselves as that. The only thing we can do is send that signal out to this invisible field, and the only thing it can do is then organize accordingly, and that's then what creates our life, right? That's Those are the things that we see, those are the things we gravitate towards, that's what dictates our, um, our actions, and it's what dictates what we will allow in our results. So if we could step back and see that we are the prow of our ancestorship, you know, I, um, you know, this week we're celebrating Martin Luther King Day. And um, and we look at where we were, and v -Lynn, please forgive me, because you know this far better than I do. Um, but if we look at where we've been and where we're going, right, we can see the growth, but my God, we still have so far to go. Yes, yes, we do. And And to recognize the evolution of it, to recognize that our ancestors, as um, maybe in a human form with the best of their ability are saying, this is the way that you should do it. But deep down, we look at the progression of um, this uh, spiritual identity moving through us. Our ancestors would certainly not say, stop where we are. That our ancestors are saying, 
take the good that we did, learn from what didn't work and keep growing on it, keep expanding, keep building, be the legacy of the growth that is happening through you. That's hap and don't freeze it because people suffer. If we freeze where we are, if we froze right where we are, yes, we're better than we were 50 years ago, but all the suffering that is currently in place will continue and people 50 years from now will suffer as people are suffering now. And especially women, right? Um, you know, mm -hmm. we talk about the cross intersectionals as a woman in co of color again, but you have a far better appreciation, not just appreciation, but this has been your experience. It's not been my experience. The only thing I can do is be aware that there is an experience out there that I haven't had and to not freeze where I am. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank, to not freeze where I am. Acknowledgement and awareness and agreement to the forward progress that can happen because of who you are and the energy that you bring to the continued growth on this spectrum. That's it, v -Lynn. And 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 it's it's an honoring of our family. It's an honoring of our ancestors taking the best without the this, you know, um pathological loyalty of freezing what is not serving. And that we're too awake today. It never, there are elements that never served, right? But now we're too awake to try to make it something that it's not. We can't go back into denial. I mean, people are, but it's, you know, it doesn't serve to go back into denial. Those of us who want more, who are really looking at, you know, there is the hope of a better day. There is the, you know, Martin Luther King's dream that you know all people can live in harmony and peace and you know nonviolence is a better way to serve versus you know making someone uh, let feel less than because you have differing um, viewpoints. Um, viewpoints can be differing that just gives a larger expanded view of something. Um, That's it. And yeah, and the, the other thing with this is to own the potential in every being, and that when when you own that, it's it's the 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 the, the, um, the tendency is growth, it's evolution, right? And so to own your potential, you've been you've done great where you are now, and Life wants so much more through you, for you, and from you. And so it's owning that next level of potential, honoring where we came from, it, it, all of it, mm -hmm. to not sugarcoat any of it, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and to bring forward that which can serve going forward um, mm -hmm. and step into who we are created to be, the potential. That is beautifully said. I love that. And as I'm looking at, darn, we could keep this conversation going for hours. I know it. However, <laughs> I'm looking at it being time to bring our conversation to a close. And I'm going to ask you, is there some wisdom about the path from dreaming to confidence and hope and freedom that you believe is possible for each of us, um, share something that you feel is important in this short time we have together, something that you want to have a positive impact on our audience. I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. The number one thing I want you to hear is that your dream is not yours, that there is a life force energy dreaming through you. You are the vehicle. You are the receptacle. You are the expression. And the more you can really own that there is something so profound that tapped you on the shoulder, you're not special. You're unique. Everybody gets that tap. And the more you're able to 
own it, then the more you're able to hear the most profound question that you can work with, which is what would I love? Because you understand that it is love expressing, seeking to express more love through you. So if you get nothing else, get that. Beautiful. Yes. The expression of love through you. Yeah. And that, that is our highest calling. It's our highest being. And thank you so much for this amazing conversation. It is truly a way for us to dream our way to health, prosperity, um, our best relationships. And to our audience, I think you got some amazing secrets and, and um, tips and advice. And uh, I want to wrap up with this thought that at the beginning of a new year, you do have the opportunity to be a new you, to share what is being asked of you to bring forth. and. I just so appreciate you, Felicia, for coming in today and sharing this with us. I love your orchids. Beautiful. <laughs> thank you. They're not real, but thank you. It's okay. So they'll always look beautiful. I <laughs> love it. <Yes. laughs> okay. So to our audience again, Felicia's information is posted below this video. You can reach her on LinkedIn and let us know if you'd like to hear on topics other than what we've brought forward so far. And you can watch previous episodes of the Health, Health Wisdom and Wealth Show on our website. So everyone, we've got some exciting things coming up in future episodes and more. So stay tuned, turn on your notifications, be a part of it all. And please do us a favor of sharing. Help us get the message out. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, be well, live, love, and be a bigger positive impact maker in your world. Avilan Hawkins, your host. It's been an amazing day to bring this show to you. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>